Hey guys, let's talk about retreating blade stall in the hip. There's a few concepts we have to talk about first, of course. Uh, so the first one is dissymmetry of lift. And then we'll talk about cyclic feathering and blade flapping, which are ways that we can deal with dissymmetry of lift. But then there's a problem called critical angle of attack that limits how effective those two methods are. And then we'll talk about how gyroscopic precession and phase lag are different and how they cause the, the effects that we see when a retreating blade stall occurs. After that, we'll get into a couple of demonstrations, and that should be it. Hope you guys enjoy. So our first concept is dissymmetry of lift. Now, if you look here, you can see the hips blades rotate in a clockwise direction. The blades on the left are moving in the same direction that you would be traveling in. That's called the advancing side. And the blades on the right are moving in the opposite direction. That's called the retreating side. The blades on the left are moving faster than the helicopter would be. And the blades on the right are moving slower relative to the speed of the helicopter. So the hips blades rotate at a constant speed. And if you were to measure that speed at the tip of the blade, it would be 180 meters per second at any point around the disc. Now if you're sitting on the ground and you measure that speed, it's going to be 180, 180 meters per second all around the disc, no problems. But once you get up into the air and you start moving forward, it changes things a little bit. Because now your advancing side, which is moving faster than the body of the helicopter, it's getting that 180 meters per second plus the airspeed of the helicopter. And the blades on the retreating side, because they're moving in the opposite direction compared to the movement or the direction of travel, they're getting the 180 meters per second of rotation minus the helicopter's forward airspeed. So the blades on the left are going to generate lift as if they were moving 230 meters per second, while the blades on the right are going to generate lift as if they were moving 130 meters per second. So you can see pretty easily that the blades on the left are going to generate more lift than the ones on the right. And what's going to happen is it's going to cause the helicopter to roll towards the right to the retreating side because that side of the rotor disc isn't generating as much lift. So one of two ways that we deal with dissymmetry of lift is by flapping. Now the diagram on the right is a Huey. It's a two blade teetering mast rotor. What's not what we're dealing with in this case, what we're looking at in the hip is a fully articulated system more like the one on the left. You can see there where the flapping hinges are out a little bit and the hub stays fixed on the mast. It doesn't teeter on the top on that trunnion bearing there like the figure on the right does. So I just wanted to quickly show you the difference between those two. But flapping is the movement of the blade relative to the ground up like you see on that hinge or down. And what this does, when the blade flaps up, it reduces the angle of attack and reduces some of the lift that, that blade is generating. And when the blade flaps down, it increases the angle of attack and increases the amount of lift that blade is generating. So what happens is, in the helicopter, your advancing side is going to flap up, like you're seeing there, and the retreating side is going to flap down. This will try to equalize the amount of lift that each side is generating. Here's a slightly more detailed diagram of what that flapping hinge looks like. And you can see where it says flapping hinge on the left hand side there. Gives you a better look at how that entire blade can lift up or down. It's worth mentioning that flapping happens automatically. It's not something that the pilot has to do. It just responds automatically to changes in airspeed or to gusts of wind. So the other way that we can deal with dissymmetry of lift is with cyclic feathering. Now this is a screenshot of the HIPS rotor assembly that I've kind of scribbled all over. It's not totally necessary to understand this, like you could really go deep into this and take a long time, but what's important is that the pilot's cyclic, the stick inside the cockpit, is controlling the swash plate that's at the bottom of the assembly there. And the swash plate moves that pitch horn, it's a rod, up and down, which causes that pitch change housing in blue there to rotate or twist which causes the blade to rotate or twist. Now this rotation or twisting is what's changing the angle of attack of the blades, in addition to being able to do that through flapping, except this one is under the pilot's control. I've also marked the position of the flapping hinge and the drag hinge and damper, just in case you're curious where they are in this assembly compared to the diagram I showed you earlier. 
This is just another angle where you can better see the swash plate at the bottom there and how it connects with the pitch horn and to the pitch change assembly there. So you can imagine as this rotates around and the swash plate's going to keep that orientation all the way around as the disc rotates, it's going to stay tilted forward the way it is there. And those, um, those pitch horns are going to change the blade rotation as it goes around. So they're going to cause that one blade to rotate up and down or um, twist left and right, whichever way you want to think of it, to change the angle of attack, which will help deal with dissymmetry of lift. So the next thing we have to talk about is gyroscopic precession. I know we talked about this in a previous video, but we're going to go over it again here because it's important to this particular concept. Now, gyroscopic precession says that any force acting on a gyroscope, which is a large mass spinning very quickly, will take effect, or the effects will be felt, 90 degrees later in the rotation. So if we divide this helicopter disc, this rotor disc here, into the advancing side on the left and the retreating side on the right, we talked about earlier how the advancing side will generate more lift than the retreating side on the right, and I even mentioned that you would think this would cause the helicopter to roll to the right. Now I bet you some of you caught me on that, and that actually isn't the case. Because of gyroscopic precession, what would really happen is that effect would be felt 90 degrees later. And instead, the front half of the disc would generate more lift than the back half of the disc, and you would get a pitching up motion rather than a rolling to the right motion. Now here's where it gets a little bit tricky because the helicopter's rotor disc, particularly a fully articulated rotor disc like in the hip, is not a true gyroscope. It behaves like a gyroscope, but it isn't truly a gyroscope. So it isn't subject to gyroscopic precession, which says that the force is applied exactly 90 degrees later. Instead, it's subject to something called phase lag. Phase lag is a similar but more broad version of gyroscopic precession, which says that the effects of the force will be felt approximately 90 degrees later. And depending on what kind of rotor system you're talking about, whether it's a semi-rigid two-blade rotor, which would be 90 degrees and would adhere to gyroscopic precession, or a fully articulated system where the hinges are out a ways from center, and in this case, it, the phase lag would be slightly less than 90 degrees. And so you won't have true gyroscopic precession at 90 degrees. Your rotation will be slightly before that. So finally, this brings us to the critical angle of attack. Now, angle of attack is something you're probably familiar with if you are um, used to flying airplanes. And it's basically the difference between your flight velocity vector, so the direction of travel, which would in this diagram is straight and level, and the direction your plane is pointing in, how much above that horizon your plane is pointing or below. Now, most airfoils will stall in the range of about 15 to 20 degrees above the direction of travel, so 15 to 20 degrees of angle of attack. And you can see in the bottom part of the diagram, at 10 degrees, air is flowing smoothly over the wing of that plane. At 16 degrees, the air is starting to separate from it and get rough, and at 17 degrees, you're basically stalling. So the same principle applies in a helicopter because the blades act like wings in a plane. And we talked about how feathering and flapping are used to increase angle of attack on the retreating side of the rotor disc in order to compensate for dissymmetry of lift. But once they get to a similar point, somewhere in that 15 to 20 degrees, depending on the helicopter and the blades and everything else, they're going to lose lift. The same thing is going to happen to them that happens to an airplane when it stalls for pulling too much alpha. So at some point, as dissymmetry of lift grows and grows and grows, and we try to compensate more and more and more for it, we're increasing the angle of attack on that retreating side blade, and it's going to exceed its critical angle and stall. That is known as a retreating blade stall. So if we go back to our overhead view here, with the advancing side on the left and the retreating side on the right, we know that as dissymmetry of lift grows and we compensate for it more and more and more, that blue side is going to stall and it's going to stop generating as much lift. Now we know because of a phase lag that what's going to happen is it will be felt more like this. So because of this offset here, we're not going to get purely a pitch up like we would have expected. We're also going to get a bit of a roll towards the right because there's a bit of a bias here towards the retreating side, which is generating less lift than the advancing side. 
So just based on the concepts we've talked about here and looking at this little diagram, what I would expect to see in a retreating blade stall is a large pitch up of the nose and a slight roll to the right side, the retreating side. So let's go try that out and see if that really is the case. All right, so we're up here at about 4,000 meters in the air, and we're going to try to trigger a retreating blade stall. So we talked about dissymmetry of lift, and we talked about flapping, and we talked about exceeding the critical angle of attack. So what's going to happen is, as we dive, we're going to dive down about 15 degrees, and we're going to start to pick up airspeed. And what's going to happen is, uh, at about 300 kph, we're going to start feeling some buffeting and shaking. And what this is telling us is that a stall is forming on the retreating side of the rotor disc. And this is because it's exceeding the critical angle of attack and can no longer generate lift. It actually isn't tied to your forward airspeed. I just want to make a note of that. It's strictly anything that might cause flapping to exceed the critical angle of attack on the retreating side. But it's easiest to demonstrate in a... Forward, in a forward airspeed dive like this. So what we're going to do is just unpause it and nose down about 15 degrees. And I'm going to try to maintain that 15 degrees nose down attitude. As we pick up speed, we'll start to feel that shaking and buffeting. And then at some point, we'll feel that violent pitch up of the nose. Now because our... Uh, because this will slow us down, and because our airspeed in this case is what's causing that problem, or one of the root causes of the problem, pitching up the nose should slow us down and should put an end to the stall, and we should be able to generate lift from that right side again. So I'm going to do nothing when that happens. I'm just going to continue to hold the exact same controls that I have right now, and then we'll watch and see what happens. diving, trying to maintain 15 degrees. We're at about 320. And there the nose is starting to pitch up. I'm doing nothing and it's getting worse. And up we go. And I'm still doing absolutely nothing. Now I'm going to recenter my controls and try to recover from this little dive here. see our airspeed got cut in half, but we're alive, and if we look at the helicopter here from the outside, nothing is broken or on fire, at least by the looks of it. Now we've probably overstressed a few things and we'll be in the shop for a while, but we're alive and nothing is on fire, which is great. So what you noticed was there was also a roll to the left. Now I believe that is incorrect. What should happen is, as the stall on the retreating side grows, we should get a roll to the right, to the retreating side. But I have a theory for why we're seeing the opposite direction, and that's because the same company who's responsible for making this helicopter also made the Huey for DCS. And the Huey is a counterclockwise rotating helicopter, so it rotates from the right across to the left here. And in that helicopter, in a retreating blade stall, the retreating side being on the left side is the side you would roll to. So my theory is they probably copy-pasted that particular flight model aspect from one helicopter to the other and then forgot to change it. So it's configured for a counterclockwise rotating helicopter, even though the hip is a clockwise rotating helicopter. So just know that in real life, in this helicopter, you would see a roll to the right, not a roll to the left. But we're seeing it here because of what I believe is a bug in the flight model. So let's do this one more time here. We'll dive down at about 15 degrees. And then what we're going to do is just prevent the stall before it happens, before it gets worse. So we're going to start pitching down here, and we're buffeting a little bit. And then by the time we hit about 300 kph, which is probably our last chance here really to pull out of this dive safely. So at about 300 kph, what I'm going to do is just ease down on the cyclic or on the collective just a little, ease the nose up on the cyclic just a little, do this gently, and just try to level out. I want to 
bring your airspeed down, but you want to do it fairly slowly, controlled, or you're going to trigger that nose up or that stall faster. So there we go. I brought my speed down to 250. And now you can add your collected back and figure yourself out. But there we go. Once that buffeting stops, you're kind of out of the danger zone, so to speak. Okay, so some of you might remember that about three or four years ago, I did a video on retreating blade stall already in the hip. And somebody named Adam Triplett commented on that video to rightfully point out that forward airspeed is not actually directly related to or directly causing retreating blade stall. It's strictly any time that the flapping on the retreating side exceeds the critical angle of attack and that forward airspeed and dives like that are not the only way to trigger this particular phenomenon. He suggested that I should also be able to demonstrate this in a steep turn. So we're going to give that a try and see how it goes. And ideally our airspeed will be well below the 300, 350 we saw last time, but we should still be able to trigger that nose up and that rollover just by turning enough that uh, in order to maintain symmetry of lift, or enough lift, the retreating side will flap too much and exceed the critical angle and stall. Alright, so this time we're going to get ourselves into a nice little coordinated turn here. At about 15 degrees bank angle. 200 kph, give or take. And we're trying to maintain our altitude. So we're just going to go around in this bank here, and then we're going to increase our bank angle and try to keep ourselves coordinated, try to keep our speed around 200 kph so that our forward air speed isn't the cause of the problem, and see if we can trigger a retreating blade stall. Similarly, it should cause a violent pitch up of the nose, and because of the flight model bug that I talked about before, it should also roll to the left. In the real helicopter, again, it should roll to the right, but because of the flight model bug here, it will roll the other way. So let's increase our bank angle to 30 degrees. Keep ourselves coordinated with our anti-torque. Got the help of the autopilot here to try to keep our altitude from falling or climbing. But it's not enough. So yeah, we're going around here, a coordinated turn, about 30 degrees bank, and we could probably do this all day. So let's increase that bank angle to 45. The speed is still just below 200 kph, still maintaining coordinated turn, now at 45 degrees bank, and things are starting to change. We are descending rapidly, we're shaking, and there goes the pitch up of the nose. I haven't touched anything. I'm just going to reduce our roll angle now that we're facing forward again. So we didn't get that roll, but we did get the pitch up of the nose, which just looked like an accelerated pull of cyclic, which I didn't do. I didn't touch it. And there you have an example of Treating blade stall at 200 kph just in a steep right hand turn. Alright, so I want to see if I can recreate what we did in the right hand turn, but in the left hand turn. So we're in a 30 degree bank here, we're at just shy of 240 kph. We're getting some icing because we're flying through a cloud. But we're going to increase this bank angle here. 45. Try to maintain that altitude. And there's our pitch up. And I'm not touching anything. And then we come back down. So that was even easier than in the right hand turn. And more noticeable, more pronounced. Alright, so that's retreating blade stall. 
We talked about gyroscopic recession and phase lag and the difference between the two of them and how they play into this particular phenomenon. We talked about flapping, we talked about the critical angle of attack, retreating and advancing the sides of the blades, and then we looked at a few demonstrations. So we looked at triggering retreating blade stall through forward airspeed in a dive, and how to recover from it, how not to recover from it, how to avoid it. And then we looked at triggering it in other ways that don't involve forward airspeed, including right hand and left hand steep banked turns. So I hope all of that made some sense. Uh, I hope it was clear. If I missed anything, please let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you guys for the next video.